Welcome to the Medical Device Made Easy podcast. Here is Munir Alazuzi from easymedicaldevice.com. And today, I wanted to talk to you about the Swiss authorized representative. So we got um, a lot of requests related to Swiss authorized representative. And I told myself, okay, let's have a, a quick chat maybe about that. Uh, because since the implementation of that, it's not something that was quite uh, old, it's quite old. Uh, so there was a lot of updates, changes or um, changes in terms of uh, information. And I want to just try to summarize here quickly uh, what are the obligations for you as a manufacturer and also for the Swiss authorized representative and also the importer. So Swiss authorized representative and we include also the importer in Switzerland. So um, the first thing that I wanted to say is, um, I don't know if you remember, it was a long time ago. <laughs> the 26th of May, 2021 changed everything. So before the 26th of May, 2021, if you are a manufacturer located outside of Europe, if you wanted to ac uh, access Europe, um, which means and not excluded now UK, because UK was also a case. Uh, if you wanted to access Europe, you have just to go through um, one uh, authorized representative for the whole Europe and one importer for the whole Europe. So Switzerland plus Europe. Now, after the 26th of May 2021, the issue is that the Switzerland, which is not normally officially located in the European Union, um, has not, or Europe and Switzerland has not signed an MRA, which is the Mutual Recognition Agreement that recognizes the UMDR and IVDR also uh, between Switzerland and Europe. Which means that Switzerland, since the 26th of May 2021, they become a third party country. Uh, and we talked about that in previous uh, podcast episodes, if you want to look at that. Uh, we talked also about Turkey. We were expecting also Turkey to exclude um, the, the the European Union for medical devices. But finally, there was the custom agreement that was signed uh, with, uh, with Turkey. Now with Switzerland, the point is that this MRA is not signed. Why? I have no clue. I mean, <laughs> we don't know exactly the, the reason. Will it be signed? I have no clue. We are, it's what we are saying to all our customers actually because it's, it's a bit uh, a problem for them also. So now we have to put in, I mean, even myself, because for me, I thought that it was a temporary situation, but we don't know now. So let's now have it as a, a permanent situation. So now you have to consider like, going to Switzerland, like if you are going to the US or to China or to Brazil or whatever, because it's a third party country for uh, the European Union. So um, it means also that Switzerland has adapted, if I can say, their legislation so that they can um, accept medical devices coming from uh, Europe or anywhere else and then decide how to manage that also. So this is what I'm, I will try to explain to you and say exactly what are the things that you have to consider. So if you want to go to Switzerland, um, the first thing is that the Swiss authorized representative that you will choose and the Swiss importer that you will choose should be located in Switzerland. So I have a lot of people that ask me, oh, I have a, a person, a, an office in Germany. Can I use it as my representative in Switzerland or my importer in Switzerland? No, uh, the principle of uh, Swiss representative or Swiss importer is the fact that it's located in Switzerland. So they have to have their address in Switzerland and they have also to get registered within Swiss Medic. Uh, so they have to get their CHRN number. Maybe it reminds you something. <laughs> it's like in Europe, the SRN number, which is uh, the registration number in the Udamed database. Here they created the CHRN number. And this is a number that you will receive as soon as you start to register within Swiss Medic. So there is a formula to fill for uh, being an importer or being an authorized representative. They will review the formula, they will check if your company is really located in Switzerland, check everything, and then they will give you this CHRN number and that you can use with your with your customers. So um, this CHRN, um, normally, as, I, as I've said, when you want to find the, the, the SRN number in, in Europe, you have to go to Udamed. So you go to Udamed and you 
put the, the on the public database you can put the name of the company or the SRN number that you find and then you know who is who if I can say so you have everything on database for Switzerland it's not really the same there is a I call it an Excel file. It's just a, a table, if I can say, that is updated regularly on a, on the a Swiss uh, website. And I, I will put that on the show notes also where you can click on it and you'll find all the companies that are registered there as authorized representative as uh, uh, that receive a, a necessary uh, CHRN number. So um, just for your information, so Easy Medical Device, we are located in Switzerland. And we have um, then also um, went through this process to get registered within the Swiss Medic, then to get our CHRN number for authorized representative and CHRN number for independent importer. Uh, we had also made a previous uh, episode uh, about independent importer with uh, Medenvoy, so um, Edouard Edgar Castile. So uh, you can see what is the principle here of uh, an independent importer in that case here. So this is mandatory then when you are dealing with an authorized representative in Switzerland or an importer in Switzerland, they should have these numbers available. So it proves that they are registered within the Swiss Medic here. So the other question that I, I get a lot is what is really the responsibility of an authorized representative or of an importer? So those are two different rules in terms of activity, but in reality, the objective is the same to verify the conformity of the company or the conformity of the products uh, that are trying to place their device uh, in the Swiss market. So you do that through two different ways. You have first the um, Swiss representative. And what is funny is that when you go to the MedDo, which is the uh, medical device um, ordinance that you are using then to, to, um, to, um, to comply to the legislation in Switzerland, you have the article for authorized representative, which is telling you exactly what is the role of authorized representative. And what is written is like that. You have to have a written mandate with, between the authorized representative and the, the company to say what they have to do, what is the role and responsibility, etc. And um, you have, as a Swiss authorized representative, to verify anything related to safety and um, formal aspect related to the device and the company so that they can place the device on the market. And what is funny is that they are just writing on the MedDo that, and then you have to follow EU MDR Article 11. So it means that they even haven't just copied what is on the EU MDR. They just say you have to go to EU MDR and follow what is on EU MDR. So um, what is on EU MDR is the fact that an authorized representative will have to verify that the declaration of conformity is correct, um, technical file is correct, and keep a copy of it. They have to support the authorities to cooperate with the authorities for any request. They have to be the intermediate to talk with the, the manufacturer uh, in case of problem, in case of questions also. Um, they have to inform the manufacturer of any complaint. So it's like you receive, I mean, on the product, you have the different addresses of the manufacturer, the importer, the authorized representative. So you can maybe, as an authorized representative, get contacted by a customer, say, oh, I have this issue. Then you have, it's an obligation to send this information to the manufacturer. So to tell them, oh, we received a complaint from this hospital, this thing, etc. as much information as possible. And then the manufacturer will contact again the customer to maybe gather more information for, from them. And what is important on the EUMDR, what is written also is that um, Swiss, or, I mean, an authorized representative, Swiss or European, they have to terminate their mandate, terminate the mandate if the manufacturer acts contrary to the regulation. And you have also to alert the authorities of that uh, because you are not here just acting as a person just checking the information and then leaving. No, you are as an authorized representative responsible for anything that this manufacturer is doing in the Swiss market. So you have to check if there is some non-conformance here uh, and then report that to authorities. But you have to terminate the mandate also. So it's not like you have to hide the information or no, you terminate the mandate and then you contact the, the authorities for, for that. And 
it happens. If you want to change your authorized representative, it's the same. They didn't mention anything. They just say, go to article 12 of the UMDR. And there it's giving you the information about how to change your authorized representative if it is in Switzerland. I mean, if it's in Europe, but you make the same thing for, for Swiss market. And the last thing for an authorized representative, and it's the same for European Union, uh, in Switzerland, you also have to have a PRRC, a person responsible for regulatory compliance that should be uh, permanently and continuously available for the uh, Swiss authorized representative. And they have to understand the medical device, the medicine, medical device ordinance for Switzerland, so the MEDDO, so that they understand exactly how this all this applies to them. So when you hire a Swiss authorized representative, it should be in Switzerland, it should have a mandate, it should have some responsibility to check your technical file, everything. The thing for technical file is that inside the Meddo, it says also that if um, the manufacturer doesn't want to share the technical file with uh, the Swiss authorized representative, they can also agree inside the mandate, the contract, the agreement that the manufacturer um, accepts in case of Swiss Medic sends a request to send directly the information to Swiss Medic. So to avoid uh, the uh, Swiss authorized representative to get this information. But I mean, we are Swiss authorized representative. We ask at a minimum, the minimum information about the device, uh, the minimum information about the fact that they have a declaration of conformity, that they have um, the instruction for use, the labels, all the information there. I'm not asking I mean, for those that don't accept, I'm not asking to send me directly the technical file, but we are asking to receive some part of the technical file just to see that it's in compliance with, uh, with the regulation. Because as I said, we have also some responsibility. Um, we are taking also some insurances for that and it costs a bit too much sometimes. Uh, so at the end, we have to have some guarantees that everything is, is in place. So. You have this case where you can send directly the information to Swiss Medic, but at the onboarding of a customer, what we are doing is that we are asking the minimum information just to confirm that everything is fine and that we have no issue to accept those products on the market. So this was for the authorized representative. Now you have also to have an importer. It's the same as in Europe. When you go to Europe, you have to have an authorized representative that is located in Europe if you are not located in Europe. Plus, you have also to have an importer located in Europe. So the phenomenon that happens is the fact that a lot of customers say to us, but we are selling small volumes, we are selling small things, so we don't have one importer. And all the distributors that are buying our products, they don't want to be importers also. So they, I mean, each of them should be an importer or one of them should be an importer for the others, etc. And they are not accepting. So they say, can you be our importer. And as I've said, we have made an episode with um, Edgar Castile from Medenvoy, which is also an independent importer located in, in the Netherlands. So uh, we talked about what is an independent importer, the fact that the independent importer is not receiving the products, but we are receiving all the documentation. So it's a desktop review of everything to verify that everything is fine. But we have also the possibility to visit the distributors that are receiving the products to check that everything is fine. But what is the minimum requirement for an importer in Switzerland also? So the minimum requirements is to verify that the device carries all the conformity marking, that the declaration of conformity is also good, is drawn up, that the manufacturer and the authorized representative are identified on the label of the products, or, and we'll talk about later about uh, labels, um, that the products is labeled and is accompanied with the, the instruction for use, and that the UDI is also assigned, if uh, the UDI is um, should be assigned here. And then when all this is done, then the importer information can be, uh, should be on the product. So we have also to know who is the authorized representative, who is the manufacturer, and who is the importer. So the three symbols or three address should be there uh, so that uh, it can happen. For us, for example, sometimes we are importer and authorized representative. So we have the two symbols, importer and authorized representative with exactly the same address. So easy medical device in Switzerland. Um, and it's the same obligation also for the importer, uh, but it's not to terminate a mandate. It's to not distribute a product or not accept a product to be distributed. Uh, if this is not conformed to the regulation. And this is also what we, we are doing with our customers to say, 
prior or during the transit, send us the information about your device that we'll be sending. We are making all the checks, but if there is an issue, we can demand that the device is returned back to you, even if it was uh, sent from far away, because we are, or the independent importer or the importer, is the only one that can accept to place a device on the market. I mean, they are guaranteeing that the device that is placed on the market is conform to the regulation. So if we don't accept, then uh, this device should be returned to the uh, to the um, to the manufacturer okay so i hope the clarification of the rule of an authorized representative and an importer uh, is clear now an importer an authorized representative is really checking the full company and full device in terms of general information and then they take the responsibility to accept to be representing this company in switzerland and then they have to pay a fees every month or every year for that so that the this service is in place Importer is the same. You are accepting to import devices in the Swiss market, but each device, one by one, here we are not talking about the global devices, but here each device, lot number, quantity, etc., should be, uh, information should be sent to the importer so that they know exactly which device exactly is placed on the Swiss market, and they have then a log of all the devices that are placed on the Swiss market, and then they decide to say, yes, the device looks fine, then we can place it on the market. If it's not fine, you have to alert the manufacturer. You can alert also the authorized representative. And if there is an issue on the market, you can also alert the authorities here. So here it's important to understand that the Swiss authorized representative and the, author the importer are really liable for anything that happens on the market. So they have to do all those checks to verify that everything is fine. Then in terms of um, the labeling, the point is that there was a lot of confusion also and the changes also by Swiss Medic for labeling. Uh, as I told you, you have to have the manufacturer name, which is mandatory for any device. Then you have some time to have the CH rep uh, name and the importer name. So there is the regulation that is talking, I mean the regulation, the guidance, and I put also the guidance on the show notes that is talking about labels. It says, for example, for labels of class one devices under MDR, not MDD, but MDR, the um, CH rep name should be on the label or a document accompanying the label until the 31st of July, 2023. So you can have it on the label or on a document that is attached with the, la with the, with the device where there is the name of the CH rep. After the 31st of July, 2023, it will be on the label. So there will be no question. Now it's on the label. It was like a transition for class one devices. If it's uh, an importer, the name of the importer should be or on the device or on the packaging or on the document accompanying the device. So it's not mandatory to have it on the device. It can be also on a document that is coming with the device. For MDR, class 2A, class 2B and class 3, the CH rep. So the Swiss authorized representative name and logo and symbol should be on the label. And the importer, the same, could be or on the device or on the packaging or on a document accompanying the device. For MDD and AIMDD products, so products that are still under the transition for MDD and AIMDD, if you your, the manufacturer of this product is located in the European Union, the CH rep um, symbol for the MDD should be on the device, on the packaging, or on the document accompanying the device. The CH rep for the AIMDD should be on the sales packaging, so it's a bit different, on the instruction for use, or on the document accompanying the device. And the importer, the same always, on the device, on the packaging, or on the document accompanying the device. And the last one, if your product is MDD or AIMDD for a manufacturer that is located outside of Europe, the CH rep name should be on the device or on the IFU. And the CH rep for the MDD, huh? for the AIMDD, it should be on the sales packaging and uh, in the IFU also. And for the importer, the same on the device and the packaging or on the uh, document accompanying the device. So this is also mentioned on the guidance that I, I mentioned uh, on the show notes. But here you see kind of the complexity per classification and also per MDD or AIMDD or MDR. So this is something that is really there. Why are we not talking here about IVDR? Because IVDR will be in place by the 26th of May, 2022. So it's still not under question here. Anything about IVDD products, they have still to follow the same rules as under IVDD because 
The MRI, Mutual Recognition Agreement, is signed for IVDD and for MDD. So you can still continue to uh, place those devices on the market and you have just those things here. And so I hope yeah, the full thing is, which is complex, I know, uh, is now understandable. Um, there is also one thing that is important to understand. The importer you have for each devices uh, that you are placing on the diva on the market have to have an importer. Um, for um, authorized representative, there is a transition period also. If your manufacturer is located in Europe, there is a transition period to appoint your authorized representative. Um, if, for example, you have a class 3 device and your manufacturer is located in France or Germany, so in Europe, you had to have an authorized representative until, I mean, before the 31st of December 2021. So a few months ago now, two months ago. If you are a moderate device, class 2A, class, I mean, class 2A, non-implantable class 2B, then you have until the 31st of March 2022, so within nearly more, a bit more than one month, to appoint your authorized representative in Switzerland. So it means that for the moment you can sell your device without an authorized representative, but before that date, I mean now, <laughs> you should already sign an agreement with an authorized representative and then you can sell your devices. You can continue to sell your devices in Switzerland. So I advise you really to rush now to try to find one. And, and you can take easy medical device. I would be happy to have you. Uh, then the last one is low risk devices and system and procedure packs. Those have until the 31st of July, 2023. And we have, we are already discussing with some class one devices for that. So that because um, you have a lot of uh, clients, distributors that are asking the manufacturers, can you prove us that you are compliant to the MEDDO, to the Swiss uh, regulation, etc. And they only find a way to have a Swiss authorized representative to show to their customers that they are in compliance. I mean, it's the customers that are pushing them, even if we have, if we have the date until the 31st of July, 2022, uh, the customers are pushing them to have this uh, compliance, uh, even if it's there is some delay here. So we are representing some class one devices, for example, that have until the 31st of July 2022 to get uh, an authorized representative, but because their, supply, their customers are pushing them to have that. So I hope this clarifies some of the questions that you may have. Anyway, if you have any question about Swiss authorized representative or importer, don't hesitate, contact uh, contact me. So at info at easymedicaldevice.com, info, I-N-F-O at easymedicaldevice.com. I will transfer the information to the right person because I have two people that are managing each of the activities. Um, so, and if you have more questions also, and I will put um, the guidance on the show notes. And at the end of this guidance, for the economic operators, you have a section specifically for frequently asked questions. There is a lot of question answers that were there that can help you also. Everything is in English, so it's fine. It was not in English before, but now it's in English. So you can then uh, look at that and try to uh, to answer a question. But if you have some question, don't hesitate. Sometime we are making a 30 minutes call with people just to uh, explain to them the, the Swiss uh, representative role and what we are proposing also. So if you have any question, don't hesitate, contact us. We'll be really happy to serve you and to be your authorized representative or also importer for the Swiss market and also for the European market. So we have also an office in, uh, in, uh, in, in Belgium where we are acting as an authorized representative for Europe and as an, uh, an importer also for Europe. So don't hesitate also to contact us for any, uh, any of those, uh, those things. Okay, so I hope this clarifies uh, the situation for Swiss authorized representative. Maybe there is more to come. And again, we have no clue when this will stop. We have no clue if this will continue to work in the, f in the next months. We just don't know that they have, uh, the EU and Switzerland have to sign this mutual recognition agreement. And after, if they sign it, then everything stops. So everything is now um, stopped. You don't need any more an authorized representative. You don't need any more an importer. So it means even us as a Swiss authorized representative and importer, all our contract will stop because, and it's written on our contract that uh, as soon as the MRA is signed and there is no obligation anymore, the contract is stopping and then you don't have to pay us anymore for, for the rest of the, of the activities. And it's why we are asking people to pay per month because we have no clue when this will stop. So it's better for us than uh, asking people to pay every year. 
Okay, uh, so thank you for uh, your attendance here. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate. I'm really happy to, uh, to answer to that. And look at uh, my email info, info at easymedicaldevice.com. Okay, I wish you a nice day. Have a good day. Bye.